Hi, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Lately I've seen a lot of images cropping up on the internet using what I like to call the twirl effect. So basically you take an image that looks like this and using Photoshop you change it into something that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop and I'm going to give you a free action that can run through all the steps to create an image like that in just one mouse click. It's a lot of fun to do. Every image is going to come out completely unique. So you can take an image and run the action or do the steps in Photoshop and you never know what you're going to get. Also I'm going to show you how to use the action to add a little bit more um, creativity to it. So let's get started. Okay so we have this image here in Photoshop already opened. And this is an image I took of a Fleetwood Mac tribute band called Fleetwood Mac. They're really incredible, and if you ever get the chance to see them, by all means, uh, go ahead and take that opportunity, especially if you like that type of music. Actually, you can see my camera up above the drum set on the back there. But So I looked at this image, and I thought, well, it's got some reds, it's got some blues, some black, a little orange. Blue and orange are complementary, red and blue complementary. So I thought this would be a fun image to give it a try on. Any image that you have that has complementary colors is going to work really well. Blues and orange, reds and greens, um, yellows and uh, yellows and blues, really or anything on opposite ends of the color wheel are going to work really great. So you look for something that you have that's colorful. The fun thing about this is every image is going to come out completely different and unique. So that's what's kind of fun about it. So let's just give this one a try and see what we end up with. So the first step in creating the twirl effect to this image is going to be that we need to convert it to a smart object in Photoshop. So easiest way is just to right click on the background and say convert to smart object. Okay, so now we have our smart object, and now we're just going to go up to Filter, and we're going to select Pixelate, and then we're going to select Mesotint. Now there are two options that work really well in Mesotint, coarse dots or short lines. Um, you can try any of these, fine dots, medium dots, you know, short strokes, but these two, for whatever reason, seem to work the best. So. I'm going to select coarse dots and the nice thing about doing this as a smart object is we can actually go back later and try it the other way. But so let's just say OK and now we kind of have this mess of a bunch of dots and that's OK, it's going to get better. So the next thing we need to do is we can go back up to filter, we're going to select blur and then radial blur. The amount is going to be 100 method zoom and good quality works fine. Say OK. Now we're going to do this two more times. So we're going to go back to filter, radio blur. Second time, filter, radio blur, and a third time. OK, so when you go to filter and you select this option right here at the top, basically what you're telling Photoshop is just repeat the exact same thing that I did last time. OK, so um, next thing we want to do is we're going to go to Filter, we're going to go to Distort, and we're going to go to Twirl. So first what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the angle is at 100, and we're going to say OK. Now we're going to come right over here to this little icon next to Twirl. I'm going to double click that, and now we're going to change the Blend Mode, and we're going to change that to Lighten. Okay, and there, once we did that, you see we have a whole bunch of fibers that have now come in. And now we're going to go and repeat the same thing again. So we're going to go to Filter and Twirl. But this time we're going to do negative 100. We'll say OK. And you could repeat this even a third or fourth time if you wanted to and play around with it and see what you get. But if you're happy with it like this, the next thing I would do then is add an adjustment layer. So we just go click on Levels. And I'm going to just bring this down a little bit, our dogs, our lights. Let me tweak this a little bit. 
Do there. That looks kind of good. Okay, right, maybe right about there. And now at this point, you could either bring this into Lightroom, you could bring it into Luminar 4, you could bring it into Topaz Studio 2, and you could tweak it out to finish it. Now, I've tried Luminar 4, I've tried um, Topaz Studio 2, and Lightroom, and I, I think Studio 2 does the best job in finishing up uh, this image out of the three, but you could use any of those. The choice is yours. It's whatever tool that you find to be the best. So to do that now, what you need to do is you need to create a stamped layer. So to go ahead and create a stamped layer, what we need to do is we're going to press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, all at the same time, and that's going to create a stamped layer for us. And now we can apply our filter, um, such as uh, Topaz Studio 2. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And it's going to open up in Studio 2. And here we go. And now we're just going to go up here to add filter. And I'm going to use the AI clear to start with. Okay. And adjust the clarity a little bit. Bring that down a little bit. That looks kind of good. Um, we can go up and do some precision contrast, which I really like. So we'll do some micro contrast. Bring up the medium. I don't think we're going to have, well, the high actually does a nice job in this image. There we go. Um, we can go, <coughs> excuse me, up here to uh, the detail slider. Give some of the details a boost. And maybe try a little sharpening. Let's see how that works. It's too much. We can just lower the opacity a little bit. And as soon as we like it and we're done, just hit accept. And that'll bring it back into Photoshop. And now we can just take a quick look. So let's just take a quick look at the before and after. So I've shut off the smart layer and the levels adjustment. So we have this version up here that's on the screen right now. That's the output from Studio 2. And that's the original photo. So we went from there to there. If we want to see the adjusted look, we can turn these smart filters back on. And that's the difference between what came out of Photoshop and then the Studio 2 enhanced clarified version. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. It's real sharp. Um, I really like that. So that was really kind of fun to do. And now, as I mentioned, you can also go back and tweak this a little bit. So for example, I'm going to shut this layer off. I can go back here to Mesotint and just double click that. This warning is going to pop up and that's okay. And let's say I just wanted to try out short lines and see what that would have done. I can just hit okay. And that's what the image would have looked like, which short lines are kind of like the quartz, coarse dots better. So I'll switch it back. I think it came out better for this particular image, but that's not always the case. And so you can go back and modify these. So for example, this adjustment layer, we can go ahead and change the adjustment layer. We had an unlightened, but maybe we would have wanted to try darken. Uh, that probably doesn't work so good or screen. Maybe that could have worked with some contrast. Uh, but again, you can go through these and try them out. Lighten seems to be the correct choice for this image. But again, you still have control over those filters. That's what we finished with. So right now using this next image from the same show, actually the Fleetwood Mac uh, tribute show that I had photographed. Um, now I'm going to go through using the um, action that I've created in Photoshop. You can download this action for free on my website and there'll be a link to it in the bio. Um, certainly you don't have to use it, but um, it's just nice that it can do this entire thing for you in just one click. So you would just click on the twirl, click the play button, and then in a few seconds it does its work and there we have it. 
we have the image. Um, now at this point, again, we can tweak this by going to mesotint and let's see what short lines would have done. Let's try that. Uh, that's kind of nice too. Um, it doesn't have the detail, but it did give it a little bit of a different dimension. Um, I'm going to switch it back, I think. But either one of those are a, a real nice choice. Uh, we can go up to the levels. We'll double click the levels adjustment here. And it's already tweaked a little bit uh, by default in the action, but then you can go ahead and fine tune it to however you like. Maybe something like that. Every image is going to be different. And then again, just Control Alt Shift E to stamp that layer. And let's bring it this time instead of uh, bringing it into Studio 2. Uh, let's give it a try with uh, Luminar. So let's try Luminar 4. And we'll see how that does with this image. So it opens up in Luminar and we can start, maybe we'll start out with the AI Enhance first and let's give that a try and see what the AI Enhance does. It's kind of nice with the brightness, um, not bad. Let's try a little smart contrast, that looks nice there, maybe a little bit less though. We can adjust the temperature of this image. Wasn't bad actually the way it is. I could adjust the uh, tint. Again, I think I will reset it to the way it was. Let's take a look at AI structure. Add in a little structure there. Let's see how that does. A little too much, I think. It starts to blend things together. And just a little bit of structure. I'm going to go to the color tab. Certainly want to add in a lot of vibrance to this image. Maybe not that much though. A little saturation. Uh, let's go to details. Bring up the small and medium details. There's not really a lot of large detail in this image. And definitely want to sharpen that. Let's bring that way up. Oh, that looks nice right there. It's really not an issue with noise, but we can add that in just a little bit actually now I think we'll, we'll keep that off maybe and um, just apply that and let that bounce back to Photoshop and we'll take a look at the two so it's before Luminar 4 and that's after it also did a really nice job and let's just shut off the filters and let's just take a look at the before and the after so as you see, every image is going to be super unique. You never know what you're going to get. And that's the fun of this. So something fun to do while you're inside, uh, something creative. And again, it's, you just you never know what you're going to get. You could have applied the twirl effect again onto this image a third time if you wanted to. Um, you know, you have a lot of creative options with something like this. And again, even with the using the action, you can go back and tweak out everything. Um, you could add another twirl, another blur, and really make it your own. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you thought it was fun. I think it's a lot of fun to do and informative. Again, that action can be downloaded from my website free of charge. So have fun with this. Thanks for watching. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, maybe you could help me out. This channel is kind of new and I really could use your help. Just hit the like and subscribe button and maybe leave me a comment to let me know what you thought about the video. Again, you can get the action for free by going to the comments section in this video. There will be a link to my website and you can get the action to create your own twirl effects. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.